how important is it to you that your film have theatrical distribution right. versus all the other options? You know, I was, options I've, been, I've been thinking about this a lot, and I am, I am a sucker for the theatrical experience, as I think many, many filmmakers so are. The and idea I'm, that financing for films largely today is driven by foreign financiers because the studios themselves are not financing movies. And I so do you think it gets turned on its head a bit. I think the theatrical experience is really the thing that sort of separates what you can do digitally. And, and I think, you know, not to be too controversial, but I think a lot of times Please. the artist, <laughs> the artist, and I, and I have the experience of both producing features and, and, and working extensively in digital, and, and a lot of it's vanity. I, I mean, can't wait. theatrical. I loved seeing I it in the theater and, and seeing how it felt with the audience and the whole audience becomes almost a part of the film. It really does. It really sort of helped. It, it just, it, it's like another character in the film. It's like a, another part of the experience. Um, but she couldn't wait to see it at home on her DVD because she felt like it was a very intimate film. And she wanted to have that individual experience with the film. And that really made me shift my perspective about about seeing a film on DVD or streaming. It really it was really comforting, actually, because I thought, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. You know, I like that, too. So, but I really, I, I, I really will fight tooth and nail <laughs> for as long as I possibly can for my films to be seen in, and you can call it vanity, I don't care. It's, it's, I just know in my heart that it's a completely different film when you see it with an audience than when you see it by yourself. But I mean, Humpty Watching a film home alone feels to me much more like reading a book than it does like going to the movies. So I get confused a little bit by that, you know, that connection to an even older medium. Um, but the newer medium, this digital medium, where is it gonna go and how are people gonna see what you're doing? Jenna? Well, that's the thing also, I think it's the hard, so hard for filmmakers today is that you really have to, I mean, this is just the reality. You guys have to do everything. You do have to be able to have the business conversation while retaining the artistic vision and and bring in talent and talk to actors and work with them and 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 I, you know, but that that is the reality and I'm sure that's what they're teaching at UCLA that you need to do basically everything and you need to blog and you need to do a video diary and 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 you better line it up and you better be tweeting you know that's still make uh, a good movie <laughs> and, and, and by the way yeah it better not suck All devices yes. and we're going to I created a new model which is called the RPM model royalty pool minutes and basically we're just tracking all the minutes watched of a film whether you watch the whole thing or you watch one minute and we're paying the filmmakers by the minute based on a subscription model. So we're kind of like the Netflix of independent film, but we pay the, minute, the filmmakers by the minute and there's no one else in between. Despite the fact that there are a lot of serious people trying to get this information on movies where they've invested or raised money for tons of money, it's extremely difficult to get it. So a transparency model, I think over time will be extremely well received. We actually have a dashboard that the filmmaker can see how many minutes are viewed at live, like watching a stock. Distributors for 20 years for $100,000, and they get the benefit of it, then the answer is no. But if you're, if, you're, if you're recreating the business model to allow for this kind of transparency and mobility of funds, um, then I think it, it has a, a, a great future to people who have library value, because one of the issues in independent films uh, uh, currently is, is, is how do you get to the library value of the movie? And so, you know, when we talk about things like whether it's, it's, it's the theatrical distribution of film or, or all these things, I really come at it from the perspective of, one, you know, never judge your audience in terms of what, how they want to consume things, right? And so what we see is, you know, 40% of them are consuming on mobile. We see, and we see how this younger audience is, is engaging in storytelling told through video and how they're, how they're becoming video creators themselves. And I, so everything I think about up here is, is kind of skewed by what, what's gonna, what is it gonna be like in 10 years, not necessarily what is it like at this moment. And so what I know is that people aren't going to the movie theaters as much, certainly not the young people. They're watching more on their phones. It doesn't mean that there's not an opportunity to tell amazing stories through video. You know, it's funny. I feel so shallow when I say this, but I honestly, I just want filmmakers to make the bigger, you know, the dough, the money. I think that it's really important that filmmakers, we reverse the, the flow. You can clap for that, by the way, because that's <laughs> like... <laughs> because then we can go out and make more movies. 